Hey there people, it's your favorite Weedle Twin Water, bringing you all another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC video. Continuing the amount of type series I began in my previous video, we're going from rock type to water type, which might seem like I'm copying the Kanto Gym Leader order, which I actually unintentionally did, and I'm actually going to continue doing for the fun of it, so let me know in the comments, you know, any sort of electric type or grass type amount type combinations in Regulation D you might want to see. But anyway, continuing on with that, the reason why I chose to do water so soon after rock is because Pokemon Home Drop. With Pokemon Home Dropping, of course, those broken legendaries like Landorus Thick and Regieleki came, but they're not currently legal on the ranked uh, Regulation C ladder, and they won't be legal at the NEIC tournament which takes place in the Regulation C format, but what is legal that came from Pokemon Home is Pixie Play, which you can give to your Fluttermean with an Arceus transfer, that's cool. But more importantly, what did come from Pokemon Home that I've been waiting for is a favorite on the channel, Simple Beam. And as much as I love using Simple Beam with Gardevoir, what I wanted to use since this generation came out is Simple Beam with the Fair and Balanced Dondos with Hatsugiri combination, which I wasn't able to do until recently, which is unfortunate because this definitely would have been a banger week one for Scarlet and Violet, but no one really cares about this combo at this point, but it's okay. I'm going to do it anyway. We have Dondos with Hatsugiri, and there's only two Pokemon in the game that learn Simple Beam even with Pokemon Home, and that is Grumpig and Golduck. And as much as I love Grumpig, Golduck was on my very first doubles team that I made in Gen 6, which also had Simple Beam. Golduck is also a Kanto Pokemon, and I am doing this in like a Kanto order unintentionally. Another reason is because when I recently played through the Mystery Dungeon remake on the Switch to get my Mystery Dungeon fix, I got Psyduck as my starter. The quiz that randomly selected my starter chose Psyduck, which eventually evolved into a Golduck, so we have that, you know, spiritual connection. So sorry, Grumpig, you're gonna have to sit this one out. And with Golduck, down to Tatsugiri, I think you might as well just make it a mono type team. So we have Golduck, Dondos with Tatsugiri, and with a mono water team, not using rain is kind of throwing. So we have Pelipper as well, and Pelipper Golduck, the double duck rain combination that did do really well at the beginning of Sun and Moon with, you know, Golduck carrying a Z move, the Z water nuke. That's not the sort of strategy we're going to be using today. I still wanted to use Pelipper because it's a mono water team and Golduck has Swift Swim. So we got the double duck Dondos with Hatsugiri combo. We have Rotom Wash just because Rotom Wash, like Power Creep has not been kind to Rotom. Like there's no way Rotom's going to be viable and Regulation D. So I wanted to use this shiny Rotom Wash on this team just for fun. Combos with Simple Beam as well with the Nasty Plot. And then last but not least, we have this Brute Bonnet. I couldn't quite think of a monotype combo to use with water. Like there was a lot of options and I figured like I could use like a bear tech with Terra Water on this team. But instead I'm just like, I want some support. A grass type on a rain team is pretty good. And Brute Bonnet does sort of deter Sun a little bit with, uh, you know, Protosynthesis. So that is the team we're packing for this video. My first opponent's team is kind of like all over the place. They have Tinglu paired with like Fluttermane, you know, Torkoal, and then Goldengo, so which reduces like their own damage. Then they also have like a Brute Bonnet paired with Fluttermane, so they might have Trick Room on that Fluttermane because they also have a Torkoal. And then they have a Dragonite randomly, so their team is like all over the place. I'm not too sure what to expect from my opponent right here. And unfortunately, their trainer card isn't too exciting. I'm still packing that Pride trainer card just because I might as well keep it for the entirety of June. And it's still, you know, a water type on a mono water team. It fits. So my opponent's going to be leading off with the Fluttermane and the Brute Bonnet. So I'm going to lead off with Golduck and Pelipper because I want to set up the rain as soon as possible. They could have a Torkoal in the back, but I do have means to handle a potential Torkoal switch in. Like the side skill swap into my Pelipper, I thought they might switch in Torkoal right there, but they just choose to stay in. I go for the Hydro Pump into Fluttermane. Unfortunately, Fluttermane is able to live because it has a massive special defense stat. Base 135 special defense, special attack, and speed on that fair and balanced Flutter Mother of VGC. But I actually like Fluttermane. It's not the most toxic top tier. Thankfully, the safety goggles. I'm forced to run safety goggles because I don't want to get my simple beam redirected by Rage Powder, right? So, able to absorb a sport. Go for the Swift Swim Tailwind thanks to that skill swap. Outspeed the Flutter main. So now we can go for a Chilling Water, finishing off the Flutter main because I'm actually a supportive Golduck. They thought, they probably thought I was, you know, a Swift Swim Sweeper, but thanks to, you know, the close team sheet and game ladder, you don't know my combination unless you recognize the team, but it's okay. Uh, I'm gonna switch out a Pelipper here because I'm expecting an extreme speed or some sort of like sucker punch from Brute Bonnet or something. I'm just gonna bring in my Don Dozo. The worst case scenario is if they spore into my Pelipper slot, but they just go for extreme speed into the Pelipper slot, doing you know, a pretty good chunk to my Don Dozo that's probably banded on the Dragonite. I'm gonna go for the Simple Beam right here, replacing Oblivious with Simple, because I figure if I'm replacing any ability, I might as well just make my ability Oblivious just so I don't get you know messed up by Intimidate. But if yeah, they're gonna hit me with the C Bomb, and I'm gonna switch out of the Gold Luck because I don't wanna get knocked out by an extreme speed and I'm able to bring in my Tatsugiri right here. My Golduck's actually able to survive that C-bomb because my Golduck's actually really bulky. 
um, you'll see that throughout the video. So we're gonna um, get the commander, you know, get swallowed, deep throated by Don Dozo. Um, we're gonna get a drastic increase, so plus four in every single stat besides, you know, accuracy and evasion. We're going to terastalize into his steel type as well, just to make that cutscene last a little longer. We, we skipped that cutscene, thankfully. We're going to avoid the E speed and body press into the brute bonnet with plus four defense we're able to knock out the brute bonnet in one hit so my um Dondozo is actually like all over the place we have a special attack we have body press and we have order up as well which is a physical attack because i'm like you know what might as well just make my like Dondozo an all-round or some pokemon unite shit imagine if Dondozo had scary had like a dual release pokemon unite like zaya recon type shit that'd be so insane but uh, hopefully i don't manifest that into existence like if that comes out and cinnabar better come out any night that's the only way i'm going to come back to that trash anyways my opponent terrestrialized normal e-speeds for some reason because that's all dragonite players know is terrestrialized normal e-speed um we're able to surf but you know the ruin uh the vessel of ruin reduces that damage quite a bit uh the ruination is going to take me to 69, 69 hp which is pretty funny and now uh the uh, yeah that's leftovers the tinglu I was gonna give Dondozo an Assault Vest or the Leftovers, but I decided on a different item, which you'll see. But um, my opponent's going to forfeit here because they know it's over, so you don't actually get to see what item I'm packing in this battle. But hopefully you all enjoyed that first battle featuring, you know, the Simple Beam Dondozo combination. I definitely had a decent matchup because they didn't have Haze or, you know, Clear Smog and stuff like that. Let's move on to the next battle. Okay, so my next opponent, what are the odds? I'm up against another mono water wow. team, but they actually have the same idea in mind with the one off type that terrestrializes into a water type. I wasn't going to show this battle because it's not the most competitive, but mono water versus mono water, I have to show this one. So let's just get into this battle. And my opponent's like really role playing as a gym leader. They have a selfie with their like ace Pokemon because they have a Float Soul and they're actually going to lead off with Float Soul and Lumineon. So my opponent definitely won in the I don't give a fuck war. Like they, they're just using their favorites and I can respect that. We're gonna switch out Pelipper, we're gonna set up the rain. I'm gonna be the nice person set up the rain. And now we're gonna switch out immediately into my Dondozo the Sleepy, just because I don't want to be taking a, like a potential wave crash from this, you know, full soul. And they actually go for a Terra Water wave crash immediately into my Golduck. And this must be choice banded because look at how much that does. I'm actually able to live because again, I am a very, very bulky Golduck. They go for Icy Wind, Luminion tries her best to be useful, but she doesn't actually knock out my Gold Duck. If they double targeted Gold Duck, that could have been scary. They probably think I am a Swift Swim Sweeper with their own rain team, but I am not. I have the Simple Beam, definitely threw them off guard a bit, and now my Dondozo is ready. Once you have Simple on Dondozo, the only thing that could stop you is a potential Clear Smog or Haze. So here my opponent is going to switch out the Floatzel, because I, I guess they just want to switch out. Um, they're going to bring an Iron Bundle right now. And the Iron Bundle is actually kind of scary because it can't freeze dry into my Dondozo and do some good damage. And we do see it is a Protosynthesis and Special Attack, so it's actually a little scary, but worry not. I'm going to switch out of my Gold Duck, of course, of course, and then bring in the Fair and Balance Tatsugiri and a Love Ball. You know, I, I really love Tatsugiri as a Pokemon. I That's definitely want to make a, protect, a Tatsugiri comp where Tatsugiri is the sweeper and not, you know, Dondozo, but uh, we'll see how well this video does because I don't think anyone really cares about this combination anymore, but you never know. YouTube's pretty weird. But anyways, Icy Wind going to miss the Tatsugiri because we definitely hopped in the art. You know, Donuts and Tatsugiri are girlfriends. Like, Tatsugiri got a little scared and now her big catfish girlfriend. Uh, yeah, Order Up's animation is so cute. We're going to get a sharp increase in defense because Order Up gives you a boost in a defense, attack your speed defending on the Tatsugiri. And with Simple, that does get doubled as well. The Luminion goes for Tail One. Go Girl, give us nothing. I love how useless this Luminion is, but I'm not going to target Luminion. I refuse to intentionally target into it. They're going to Freeze Dry Crit me. Thank God I Terrestrialize into a Steel type. I predicted that crit. I actually go for Surf. And uh, I thought Luminion might be Swift Swim, so I wanted to give it a special attack increase to be nice. But unfortunately for them, it is Swift Swim in this instance. If it was Storm Drain, it would have gotten a boost. I wanted to give it a boost, but unfortunately, you know, the Luminion is still useless. Now they're going to bring back in the Float Soul. And even though I'm at plus four defense, this is still a banded Wave Crash. And I actually don't have any defense EVs. I think I have like max special defense. And my EVs are like all over the place. I also have like a lot of special attack EVs because I do have Surf. So I figure with plus four special attack, I wanted to use Surf for fun because, you know, Dondozo Tatsugiri is a pretty try-hard combination. I wanted to, you know, spice it up a little bit. So we have Surf and then we have Body Crest for physical attacks 
order up. It doesn't do too much damage without attack EVs, but it still does okay chip, and it gives you, you know, the, it's basically like iron defense, but, you know, it does damage. So, um, you only need to use it once. So, it's kind of on there. It doesn't even need to be on here, but we'll go for the rest. Reveal our last move. We are Resto Chesto Don Dozo. And the sleep, I, I caught a Don Dozo with that uh, sleepy mark, and I'm like, I have to use a Resto on it. So, uh, yeah, I go for the rest. Get all of my health back. My opponent's gonna go for the wave crash, and they're gonna go for a dazzling gleam. <laughs> this Luminion, go girl, give us nothing. She's so she's trying though. I respect my opponent for trying to use Luminion. There's a reason why I haven't really tried to use her. Maybe one day I'll <laughs> handicap myself to the point where I use Luminion and make it a three v four. But you know, I love Luminion's design. I wish she was better. How would you buff her? Like even giving her Quiver Dance wouldn't even help. Like she's so just. I mean, she's a decent support. Like, she gets Swift Swim Tailwind. Like, she's not horrible, but, like, I don't know. Like, she's just not giving. Maybe maybe she'll get a Paradox form. Either her or Love Disc. I would love to see Love Disc take over the meta. Anyways, and cause Pelipper, they're gonna set up the rain again, and I think that yeah, they just forfeit because they know that this Dondozo combination handled their model water team. Hopefully, you all enjoyed that Dondozo Tatsugiri combo once again. Let's move on to some other combos with this team. So my next opponent's team is actually really bad for me. So they have Murkrow. Now Murkrow is actually, you know, a pretty scary Pokemon for this team because obviously I want to set up that simple Dondozo boost, but Murkrow carries Prankster Haze. So no matter what I do, it will be able to go for a Prankster Haze and remove all my boosts immediately. So that is really bad for me and I can't really rely on Dondozo in this matchup. My opponent's team in general is also really scary. They have Fluttered Mane, Chi Yu, which is a decent combo, and then they have Chi Pao Dragonite, and then Murkrow with a likely Spax or Scarf Golden Go, very hyper offensive team. Let's just get into this battle. Are hey, these my opponent's trainer guards cute? They're like taking a picture with like some Iono graphic. I don't even know where that is in the game. Anyway, they're gonna lead off with their, you know, Murkrow Goldengo, as I'm gonna lead off with Tatsugiri and my Rotom Wash. So Rotom Wash actually quad resists, make it rain. So they're gonna Trastalize turn one though into a ghost type. I, I guess they were really afraid of this Rotom. I just protected on the off chance they want to go for expect Shadow Ball or maybe a Scarf Trick. Like, I wasn't sure. They go for Sunny Day, though. So they even have Sunny Day to make this matchup even worse for me because I'm obviously a Rain team. I'm out of water against a Sun team with Haze. They go for a Thunderbolt, though, as I'm able to go for a Mirror Coat into the ugliest Goldengo, one-shotting it, which is beautiful. Knocking out Goldengo is just so great, especially with Mirror Coat. Taking itself out, basically, is just... That was a great feeling. Anyway, in comes Fluttermane, though, and it's going to get a Protosynthesis into a special attack. Yeah, so this is not great. Fluttermane's probably just gonna like one-shot my whole team right now, but I'm gonna switch out Tatsuki here because I don't want to let it get killed by a Dazzling Gleam. I'm gonna bring out my Pelipper just because I don't want the Sun to increase the Fluttermane's damage, so we're gonna get rid of the Sun. But then the uh, Fluttermane actually has a uh, booster energy, which is kind of a strange option to use when you have Manual Sun, but you know what? I respect it. That means they don't have choice specs to you know further do booster damage which is good for me. I'm gonna Trastalize into an electric type here. They go for a Tailwind, so pranks are Tailwind, that's what Mercro is really good at. Um, they're gonna go for a Dazzling Gleam and do a really big chunk of damage because they have that special attack Protosynthesis. I just go for the Terra Electric Thunders to see if we can maybe knock out this Flutter Mane, but it's able to live. I guess it's weaker than Hydro Pump, but I really did not want to miss that Hydro Pump, so I just want to do as much damage as possible to this Flutter Mane. Maybe fish for a pair of chance, but we definitely did not get that, so. I'm gonna bring in my Gold Duck right here, and now I, they go just go for a Dazzling Gleam, and they're gonna do a really big chunk to my Rotom Wash, but we're able to live, and then we're going to Nom 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 on our Citrus Berry, getting some HP back. I probably should run like an, uh, the Figgy or Fiwan Berries that give you 33% HP, but honestly, it's, it's about the same. It's like 8% HP difference, but anyway, Rotom usually gets it at like ready speed though, so maybe the Pinch Berry would be better, whatever. Either way, Thunder's just gonna knock out the Flutter Mean. Thankfully, that really scary threat goes down. And now the opponent only has one Pokemon left, and I forgot what it is. Um, okay, it is Champau. So they're going to bring in Pao, which, you know, is definitely a very scary Pokemon. And now Murkrow's Foul Play is going to do even more as well because of the Sword of Ruin. I do believe that's how that works, so uh, that's kind of scary. They just go for Sunny Day once again to get rid of my brain, which is totally fair. So, like I said, this matchup's really not good for us. They go for Ice Spinner into Rotom. We're able to guard ourselves with Protect. And now I'm going to go for the Chilling Water <laughs> into the uh, Chiang Pao to break the Sash and to lower its attack, which is great for us. But now I'm going to switch out of the Rotom because I want to reset the rain. And I forgot if I sack Tatsuki. No, okay. No, I don't sack Tatsuki. I just bring back in Pelipper just because I want to set up the rain once again. And I don't think they're going to go for a double sunny day. They go for Sucker Punch, expecting like an attack. So that's really great for me. And I'm able to, they also have Haze. So they go for the Haze, but since uh, Chiang Pao's faster than Murkrow, Sucker Punch goes first. 
Um, but yeah, they actually have Haze and Sunny Day, so like I mentioned, my down dose of Tatsugiri combo would have done horrible. <laughs> but yeah, we're able to taunt the Murkrow, preventing it from going from any more Tailwinds, perfect timing, and any more Sunny Days. So now they try to go for Sucker Punch again, but I just go for the Skill Swap. They think that the uh, Gold Duck is the threat, even though I'm using Chilling Water. Maybe I should use Hydro Pump just to, you know, make the opponents think that Golduck's a threat. But the Chilling Water attack drop ha does come in clutch sometimes. And it's also just really fun to say. Like, people hate Chilling Water. People wish Scald was back. But I like Chilling Water. I just wish it was, like, a little stronger. Or maybe it was, like, spread. But that's my only complaint about Chilling Water. But here my opponent's going to forfeit because the uh, Golduck uh, Pelipper was able to clean them up in the end. We're able to 4-0 them even in a horrible matchup. See, I'm not over-reliant on my gimmick. I, I won without Down Dozo. So hopefully you all enjoyed that battle. Let's move on to the last battle. Okay, my final opponent today is packing a pretty cool team. Like they have, you know, Iron Bundle, very cool and get it. So they have their car and they have Meow Scarada. You barely see Meow Scarada nowadays, but of course, the one time I run into it, I am packing a mono water team. I can flower trick, ignore the uh, Down Dozo boosts. So I'm not sure if Down Dozo Tatsugiri is really great into this team, but let's just get into this battle. So my opponent's going to be leading off with Talonflame and Iron Bundle. So they want to go fast. I'm going to lead off with Golduck and Rotom Wash because I want to use Simple Beam into my Rotom Wash. I didn't get to use any Nasty Plots last game and I want to use Simple with a uh, Nasty Plot just for fun. So they're going to switch out into Iron Hands for some reason. They don't want to take a Thunderbolt, I guess. And they're going to Terrestrialize into a Grass type. These people, these Talon Siders are really afraid of this Rotom Wash. And for what? Like, it's just a Rotom Wash. Like, Power Creep has been so rude to Rotom. But you know what? I, I love Rotom as a Pokemon. I mean, it's definitely, like, it can be annoying on, like, Volt Turn teams. You're like, wow, I'm so skilled. But Rotom like a pretty honest Pokemon in general. Like, I don't know. Rotom's like, I don't know. I, I like Rotom. I don't want to use it on this team because it is shiny. It is a legit shiny I caught at the beginning of uh, Scarlet and Violet and it's just been sitting in my PC. I wanted to use it. And unfortunately for me, um, I did not do the Eevees right and my gold luck is slower than Rotom Wash. So we don't get the Simple Beam before we get to Nasty Plot. But it's okay because I don't think that these uh, two Pokemon can really threaten me too, too much. Like Talonflame might have Terra Blast. I scout for it with Protect, but I don't think it has Terra Blast. And my opponent's gonna go for a wild charge. I switched into my brute bonnet, so we're able to do a really good pivot there. And now I'm gonna switch it back out of brute bonnet because I'm expecting a fighting type attack into that slot or a brave bird. And I'm gonna bring out my Pelipper because I wanna set up the rain because I do carry thunder and hydro pump as my two attacking moves. I'm at Rotom Wash and I want Thunder to at least be consistent accuracy. They go for a taunt though because they were expecting a Spore, I guess, so um, that's good for me. And they were maybe also expecting a Terra, so they just go for a Drain Punch and Taunt just to cover for the potential Terra, which is totally fair. And I don't think Drain Punch would one-shot Brubana anyways, even without the Terra, so we're able to pivot into the Drain Punch and now we're able to set up the second Nasty Plot and get up to plus six special attacks, so even though I messed up the Eevees a little bit, uh, we're able to go for the Nasty Plot. And on the Rental Code, I'll probably fix it. So if you want to use this team, I'll probably fix it in the Rental. But unfortunately, in this battle, um, it's not... You know, I messed up. You know, see, even I'm not perfect. But I go for Protect right here, because that's how you VGC. You spam Protect. Especially when there's a threat out on the field, people will definitely double target into Protects, especially if you have a lead. If you're behind, Protects become a lot more predictable. But if you use Protects smart while you're ahead and really like, you know, draw attacks like there, Meow Scrud went for Flower Trick, we're able to Protect and then crit it with a Hurricane and it's not Sash. So we're able to just knock it out, which is really great. Meow Scrud is a big threat to a Mata Water team and, you know, we're able to knock it out. So Tailwind's going to go out for the opponent, which is good. And now they're going to bring back up, you know, the Tailwind Setter. So they're just going to get it back up, but it's okay. I don't really need speed control too much in this game because their team is relatively bulky. Outside of that, uh, um, yes, Garada. The team is not too hyper offensive. I'm gonna switch into my Brubana here, expecting another wild charge potentially. If they predict that and go for a drain punch, you know, well played. But thankfully for me, I think they just go for wild charge. Yeah, they go for wild charge into the Pelipper slot, and we're able to bring in the Brute Bonnet. So we're kind of reading my opponent like every turn. <laughs> I kind of feel bad. Here I'm gonna go for a plus six Hydro Pump in the rain, and we're able to one shot Iron Hands. Even through an Assault Vest, Iron Hands is a really bulky Pokemon, so that was pretty impressive. I know it's like plus six in the rain, like how doesn't that kill, but you'd be surprised. Like Iron Hands can really live a lot of stuff. Anyway, in comes Iron Bundle, and now I'm going to read my opponent so hard. So I Terrasalize into a Water type and Protect, right? Because I'm expecting them to go for a Brave Fruit Freeze Dry. And they DC mid-turn, okay? So that's how you know I, am going to I read the rest on Tuesday. On so Tuesday. Let, let's let the turn play out. So we Protect on the Freeze Dry. That's amazing, right? We Terrasalize into a Water-type to avoid the super effective damage on the Brave Bird. So 
Brute Balance able to live the Brave Bird. They could have went for a Taunt, but they just didn't. I go for the Bullet Seed into Iron Bundle, going through any potential Focus Ashes, and that's, you know, obviously able to knock it out with the Loaded Dice. So the opponent, like, knew they got handled. I've never seen a Rage Quit, like, mid-turn. Like, I've seen it, like, at the very end of a battle before the game ends, but, like, mid-turn like that? That was a lovely, delicious, nutritious Rage Quit that I figured I would end the video with, so... Yeah, hopefully you all enjoyed that Rage Quit. Brute Bonnet getting to showcase the Terrestrialized Water. There's also some other synergy on this team with the Terra Water Brute Bonnet. Here's the frontal code if you want to try it out yourself for the last few days of Regulation C. You can use, you know, Simple Don Dozo and, you know, abuse it and hopefully you don't run into Haze a million times. Uh, you can definitely play around it with Taunt Golduck, but it's definitely not the easiest. There's some things I want to mention. So Brute Bonnet also has some other synergy on this team. Like we have the Soak on Tatsugiri to change the opponent into water type. So obviously Rotom and Brute Bonnet hits them super effectively. But there's also, you know, Terra Blast in the rain. You can use Helping Hand Pelipper to get some really big hits. So even though Brute Bonnet's like mostly on this team for support, it can definitely do some good damage with, you know, Terra Water, Terra Blast in the rain. And then it has the Soak with the Bullet Seeds and stuff like that. But I wanted to use that over Amoongus just because Amoongus is so spammed and not many people use Brute Bonnet. Though ironically, I don't think there was an Amoongus in this video, which is pretty funny. Anyways, hopefully you all enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. I'm on the road to 200k and would like to reach that before the end of the year if possible. I do have a Discord server as well, a place to hang out, talk about Pokemon, and just have a good time. I'll leave a link to that in the description, as well as my Twitter if you want to check that out. And the, you know, moveset Pokepaste if you're interested in that as well. All that will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. I love you all very, very much. Let me know what your favorite water brand is for a bonus question of the day. And also to let me know if you watched till the end. Thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. I love you all very, very much. I'll check you all in my next video.